Hey guys, so welcome back to part two. Um, straight into it. No waffle. So the plan is to get this thing stripped, basically, as quickly and as efficiently as possible. Um, obviously, I'll be paying attention to anything horrific as it comes apart, but the idea is to get it lit literally broken down into its sort of component parts. And then we can start a massive cleaning exercise and start measuring everything and deciding on what the shopping list is going to be. So I'll do a bit of silent filming and uh, when I think it's necessary I'll um, give you a little bit of commentary. But yeah, we'll just we'll get it all stripped. And then the main event is going to be the measuring of all the components and the uh, obviously the reassembly. Happy days. Yeah. So one thing to note is I've um, I've not done a massive clean. I've just spent a bit of time. Um, getting the worst of it worst of it off so I haven't gotta you know I haven't gotta be fighting with all the huge amounts of dirt especially around that front sprocket cover it was absolutely caked um ah yeah so camshaft removal um first thing to do remove the camshaft tensioner It's got an oil, it's got a, what am I trying to say, it's got an oil pipe on the back of it as well. So it's hydraulically assisted. Reminds me actually of back in the day when the first model Hayabusa came out, there was a recall on the cam chain tensioner. I was doing Hayabusa cam chain tensioners in my bloody sleep. You had to, it was the tensioner, the cam chain tensioner and there was a pipe, which is this oil pipe, which you can't really see. Um, which goes onto the oil gallery. This is on the Hayabusa, not on this engine. And then there was a different tensioner blade as well. And we had, fucking hell, we used to draw short straws in the workshop who got to do them. And it always seemed to be me that got them. But you end up doing them in your blooming sleep. I literally did, I'm not going to say hundreds, but I must have done 50 of them. We were a Suzuki main dealer at the time when we got the work from all over the blooming place all the recall work anyway wafflesville so to get the cams out cam chain tensioner out so it, 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 it's a what's the word i'm looking for so interestingly this cam chain tensioner is already at full um What's the word I'm looking for? Bloody hell, speak, Jim. Is that in focus? So the cam chain tensioner, when it came out, was almost at, at maximum travel, which suggests that the chain is worn out and or the tensioner blade, but it's going to have a new cam chain and it'll get new tensioner blades and stuff as well, given the mileage. And also see on the uh, tensioner here, possibly... Anyway, I'm getting into the weeds already, aren't I? So... What we'll do is when all this is washed off, we'll go through it in a different in another episode piece by piece and we'll discuss what's worn and what needs to re be replaced and stuff. So to get the camshafts out, cam chain tensioner off. Um, don't worry too much about the position of the engine um, because almost regardless of where you put the engine, you'll find that some of the valves are pushing up on the camshaft, so the camshafts are going to want to come out. So what I do is, it's not the ideal tool, this T-bar. Fucking hell tight. Too tight. You land a jumbo jet in there. So what I'm going to do, obviously the valve springs are pushing on the cams and we don't want to, sort of undo one end and have the, you know what I'm saying, you'll end up breaking a camshaft carrier. So what you do 
you take all the screws out, all the bolts out, apart from the, the two on each end, and you remove all the middle ones, so then you can, you know what I'm saying, you can get the camera, you can, I'll show you, I'll show you. Fast forward this bit and I'll get to the actual removal of the cams. Right, so I've got all the bolts out apart from the ones on the ends and I've got the ones on the ends just cracked off and then what you will do is you just slowly undo, you can feel which ones have got tension on them so they come up nice and easy if that makes sense or nice and level, straight and I, I would do the same, you'll see the assembly but I, I would do the same thing with assembly just pull the cams down nice and evenly if you're doing one yourself, you might want to observe the cam chain, you know, the camshaft timing marks and stuff, just familiar, familiarise yourself with the marks, but yeah, it's, it's old news to me, so I don't need to be looking at the marks, but it's always a good idea if you've not had something apart before, just uh, you know what I mean. So there'll be location dowels under here that you need to pay attention to. Little guide plate, basically that stops the... It rests over the top of the chain and basically traps the chain between the... the top of this and the sprocket, stops the valve timing jumping. If the chain got really slack timing wouldn't be able to move, there's not enough room for the chain to jump a tooth on the sprocket. So as this comes apart, you know, I'm not doing any measuring or anything, but I'm going to be just eyeballing everything just out of interest as it comes apart and gets laid out on the bench. Just see if there's anything obviously horrific with it. I don't think there's going to be though, because it's, uh, apart from, excuse me, not been in shot, apart from that uh, rattly clutch, it seemed to be, to a look at the bearing journals, there's some location dowels, there's two on each, you haven't got to worry about these you can't get them the wrong way around when it goes back together that's it's got ex written on it that's got in written on it so that's it's you know it's easy peasy the chain will just hook off don't worry about the cam chain just drop that down the hole just quick just look at the lobes just see if there's anything obvious Fair play. It's absolutely perfect, which is staggering really, the mileage it's done. What I am expecting to see, and I might be proven wrong, um, I'll be surprised if it doesn't need valve guides and valves. The, the head of the, you know, the seat will be worn. It's usually the valve guide that wears. I don't want to get down into this now. Usually you see wear in the valve guide, usually more on the exhaust side than the inlet side. And you'll also see if you look at the valve, the face of the valve where it touches the seat, um, that'll be worn. It'll likely end up having 16 new valves, 16 guides and all the seats cut. Um, but we'll see, we might, we might be lucky, it might not be that horrific. Some dowels here. So what I do is when I'm taking stuff apart, the dowels come out easily, like these are, I'll, I'll rescue them. If they don't come out easily, i.e. they're not going to just fall out on their own, I'll leave them in situ 
um, either permanently and, re and just you know leave them there until sorry I'm out of shot again. I'll leave them permanently where they are and just they can stay there and it can get reassembled because it's often the case if you try and remove a dowel you'll end up crushing it or deforming it and you've got to have a new one so yeah sometimes leave them in place if they've got to come out you know if it's a cylinder head mating surface that needs cleaning or something then you've got to remove them uh, right what do we need um, magnet on a stick let's take all the shin buckets out and then we need a 12 mil socket and a breaker bar get this head off right so I'm going to pull all these shim buckets and shims uh, it's not strictly necessary at this point because <laughs> fucking hell really should we edit that bit out I think we will drop the shim where's the fucking shim gone I'll find you later. Right, keep going. Take two. So, I'm going to remove all these shim buckets. It's not strictly necessary at this point. Um, you can get the head off without doing this. It's just what normally happens is you get the head off, and in your excitement to. Uh, have a look at the valves on the other side, you flip the head over and they all, all the shin buckets fall out. So if you take them out beforehand and then you can organise them all and you haven't got to worry about it when you pull the head. Make sure as you lift them, that usually the shim, get it in camera, that usually the shim comes out stuck to the shin bucket. Sometimes it's stuck on the end of the valve. So just as you pull them out, make sure you're bringing the shim with it. Not really a deal breaker for this engine because the, you know it's all going to be refreshed anyway, so it's going to end up with different shims, and yeah, you, you understand, I'm sure. Um, right, okay, so so from the outside in, fucking engine's going walkies. So you just uh, break them initially, not literally. So, yeah, I think I've mentioned it in the other video. Um, I don't like using a buzz gun to take these things apart. Just old-fashioned by hand. I like to know that all the threads feel nice as stuff comes apart. There's an interesting bolt on this side, which goes through the centre of the cam chain tunnel. Looks a little bit like a valve cover bolt. You getting that? Goes through this side here. It's for noise reduction. If you listen, I don't know whether this is going to come out on mic. It's sort of hollow sounding where the cam chain, ton cam chain runs. This bolt is to keep some pressure on the casing to, anyway, yeah, it's like an acoustic thing. Bizarre. Quite a few different bikes do that. Right, stop talking and work. Right, knocking stick. Uh, hold up. Water pipe there. Let's undo that before the head is going to fall off on its own. it okay stop 
stuck on. Half the gasket is stuck on the head and half on the top of the barrels. That's it. It's better. Right. Arrgh. Seriously. <laughs> Come on now. Off you get. That's it. Uh, let's put this down. Right, so... Not a great deal to see at this point. Let's get rid of this head gasket. So, initially I just want to eyeball the top of the cylinder and just see. Fucking hell, it looks amazing. <laughs> You're not gonna, you'll get a better shot of this, but you can still see the hone marks in the cylinder wall. Um, yeah, let's just not get too, um, is that engine moved or is the camera moved? The, en the camera's moved. No, the engine's moved. Um, yeah, I'm not going to get too in the weeds with it now. Just want to get it apart. Um, you probably already realised, but there are no barrels to come off, so we're not going to get to the pistons until later on. We've got to get the bottom end apart, undo all the big end caps on the con rods and then the pistons come up with half with the top bit of the con rod attached out the top here but you'll see that as it comes a, comes apart right so we're going to move on now to down this side I'll move the camera down by the water pump so the water pump and this thermostat housing and all this sort of gubbins from this side and the generator cover and then we'll flip over to the other side almost exactly the same as the Hayabusa engine if you saw that video the Reduction gearbox for the starter motor and the clutch and stuff on this other side. Flip it over, sump off. Um, same as the higher booster again, there's an oil strainer, pressure release valve and stuff in there. But this is a little bit different in the... Well, A, I've just mentioned the barrels are part of the... The cylinders are part of the upper crankcase. But this is a three-piece crankcase. So you can get at the gearbox without disturbing the... Um, the crankshaft and stuff. Anyway, you'll see as it comes apart. I've got, actually, if you want to delve a little bit deeper, I'll put a, where is it? I think it's this corner. The little thing pops out, a link to another video. If you want to know about more, more about gearboxes, specifically for this engine too, although they're pretty much all the same, I did a, a deep dive on a gearbox on one of these. It was this particular engine I used for my anatomy of a motorcycle gearbox video. So if you want to go and learn about gearboxes, um, it's one of these engines I'm stripping to show you the workings of the gearbox. Anyway, I'm waffling, aren't I? Right, so, yeah, let's do this side with the water pump and that first, before we go any further. Oh, it's kind of tricky to show this without getting in the blooming shot, to be honest. So let's get rid of this water pump. A couple of hoses. There's a hose up here which goes to the cylinder head. That's undone and then two bolts if I can see them get my head in the shot sorry guys so this just pulls out same design as the um I know I keep referring to the Hayabusa but it's what we did last time and some of you that are watching this probably watched the Hayabusa one so this just pulls out on an o-ring and it gets its drive from the oil pump. So there's the bolt and a load of water. Are we, oh, are we getting that? So this is the drive here. And then inside it takes its drive off the oil pump, which in turn gets its drive off the back of the clutch. I'm not worried particularly about contaminating this with all this muck it's going to be clean to within an inch of its life before it goes back together so I know I've said it already and I'll say it again it's literally it's just really about getting it apart at this point um, right generator cover what do we need get rid of that let's get an allen key and get rid of that gear position switch next now this will be the same once again as the Hayabusa so it'll have multiple See, same, we're getting that same three wire plug. Obviously the position of the switch is different. The other one was 
with a Hayabusa was behind the clutch basket. This one is this side. It's more common to see them externally like this on this side. Having them behind the clutch basket is not something that would be that common. When you pull this off, if you remember from the last one, there's two little um, plungers here with springs. They can ping out and get lost quite easily if you're not paying attention. The low ring. Let's get me magnet and get rid of those. Make sure we get the spring as well. We get in that. So easy to lose this stuff if you're not. Well, if you're not aware that it's there, it's really easy to lose it. And even when you know it's there, it's still still quite easy. Uh, right, what do we need? Five mil Allen key T bar. Ah, you probably noticed NRC covers. Ah, these used to be all the rage, basically for racing. Nice thick aluminium, so you can slide the bike down the track and not wear a hole in the generator cover. It's had some, uh, it's had some money spent on it. This bike in its life, it's got that. You saw when it, the engine was coming out. It's got that full, uh, full Yoshi Yoshimura system on it. Got these nice engine covers. It's um, it's had some money spent on it over the years. Knocking stick, same as before. You can see that the uh, the what am I trying to say? You can see that the generator is. In, bolted to the inside of this cover. It's really hard working around a camera. That's why these, I mean, setting the shots up obviously takes a little bit of time and you've got to think about what you're going to say, but just having a camera in the way just slows you down so much. Me. Magnets are strong and it's stuck on a dowel. There we go. That's that. Get that in shot properly. One of the dowels has stayed in the cover, one's in the crankcase. That's a sort of a classic example. That dowel is probably well and truly stuck in there. No need to remove it, it can stay in there. The gasket surface can get clean with the dowel in position. If I tried to get it out, I'd probably ruin the dowel and need a new one, so just leave it alone. You just add, excuse me, you just add cost and uh, unnecessary, I was going to say cost and unnecessary expense, that's, expense, that's the same bloody thing. Um, you just add work for yourself, basically, and extra cost. Fucking hell, Jim, stop talking and, yeah. So we've done this side now, generator cover's gone, water pump, uh, probably move to the front now, there's an um, oil cooler here, get rid of that and then we'll go around the other side and do the clutch. These bolts are a uh, favourite for seizing up. Obviously on the front of the engine here they get a lot of the weather, but luckily we're doing all right. Ooh, that's it. So this, for those of you that don't know, this piece here, this is the oil filter. This piece here is an oil cooler. So there's two pipes, an in and an out, and the cooling system flows water through here, and there's a heat exchanger. And the oil pump pumps oil through, and the cooling system pumps water through, and the, the water, cooling water cools the oil. as opposed to your traditional type oil cooler that looks like a radiator where the oil's just literally pumped through a radiator. Nice and compact, which is the reason they use them. Not as efficient as a radiator type oil cooler, but worth having nonetheless. 
beware massive oil spill coming up. <laughs> uh, there you go. So you can see the two ports for the oil in and the out for the oil. You get the idea. Oil filter I'll probably just leave on for now just for less messes sake. Spin it around a bit and we'll do the clutch. A glove upgrade. We'll go after this starter first. This is a hard to sort of in the shot a bit, aren't I there? Um, not a huge amount I can do about that. Nah, that camera angle is pissing me off. Right, hang on a second. How's that? It's a bit better, isn't it? Right. Virtually identical to that Hayabusa engine in terms of what's behind this cover. don't have the little noggins that the genuine Suzuki covers have for helping you get them off. There we go. Little washer. Little spring washer, washer on this side here. Yeah, no surprises there. Uh, what do we need? Let's get rid of that starter motor. 10 mil T-bar. Tappy, tappy. Tiny little starter. Okay. Cool, blimey, that's tight. Too tight. Fucking hell. Land a jumbo jet in there. Did I already say that once? I think I did. Five points if you know what movie that's from. Do you like dags? Ah. Right. Okie koki. You know you want to. Spring washer. Yeah, no, no surprises. Tapered roller clutch here. Sprag clutch for the starter on the end of the crankshaft. Nothing else in there, no pickup or anything. Uh, right, clutch cover. Fact, let me just lay this out on the bench first. Stay organised, people. T holder. Wouldn't it be funny if I was trying to be a smart ass and it fell off? Let's not do that. Classic Suzuki, no, what am I talking about? Not classic Suzuki, classic motorbike engine cover. They, this hole 
isn't a blind hole it goes through it's open on the back so they have one of these little rubber sealing sealy washery things on so you need to remember if you're taking something apart and then randomly one of the bolts has a washer on it like that you're like why is that one got a washer on sometimes they're copper washers these are like a, a steel washer with a rubber seal built into them yeah if you're taking a cover off and you think why is that one bolt just that one bolt got a washer on that's why it's a it's there for a reason, so pay attention. Right, oh, tappy tappy. Gasket. Tell you what I am noticing. It's all nice and clean inside. Which, for the mileage, you know, what, what I mean by clean is, I mean, um, no sludge. It's all, like the, you know, in the bottom of the... Do you remember that Hayabusa engine, how minging it was inside? This is all... Um, the oil in it is actually quite clean. And a lot of these engines, when you tear them down, they've got that horrible sort of burnt smell. They just... The oil's stinky, like it hasn't been changed very often. And this doesn't smell like that. This smells... I think this engine's had love, even though it's got big miles. I think it's... Um, well, the guy clearly loves it because he's prepared to spend a fairly sizable amount of money on it, even though it's an old thing. It's likely going to end up with a new clutch and it's certainly going to end up with this bearing new. Do you remember that, that when I was running it that clutch noise would be interesting to see what this bearing looks like. There's something going on with this clutch because it was noisy with the clutch lever pulled in. Okay so same story as before this nut is um, been staked over, been punched over into the spline gearbox shaft. <coughs> Just buzz it off. Uh, get the air gun going the right way. <coughs> Just like that. You'll be pleased to hear as well that uh, I've fixed my airline. So I shouldn't get interrupted, he says, and I can hear air leaking. What's going on? Oh, it's alright. Okay, so, exactly the same as the Hayabusa one, actually not quite the same, because the other one, anyway, let's not do that, not going into clutches, washer, um, we'll eyeball the clutch properly later, um, let's get this bearing out like last time, spacer, Ah, here's the thing. Didn't happen with the Hayabusa because the engine just happened to be in the right place. But one of the crank webs can get in the way. It'll stop you getting your clutch basket out. So what you need to do is... Span on the end of the crank. Hold the cam chain so it doesn't get in the way and just turn the crank till the crank web gets out of the way. Really. There's a con rod in the way now. There we go. That's it. Yeah, we'll inspect all this later on. Same design again. Oil pump drive gear. Another washer on the back of the clutch. Gear driven oil pump. The only difference is in here, there's no, um, no gear position switch because it's on the other side. Right, that's that enough apart now um what else do we need to do we'll flip it over now turn it over and we'll do the sump and then the first piece of the crankcase which allows us to get to the gearbox and then there's the next piece which allows us to get to the crankshaft um right i'm gonna have a tidy another new pair of gloves flip the engine over and then we'll do the sump 
Hey guys, Editing Jim here. So I'm going to call time on this now. We're over half an hour and I'm only halfway through the edit for this uh, Take Apart episode. So there'll be another part to the strip down. See you in the next one.